Hi, how's it going? I'm Marlena. Thanks for wandering by. Welcome or welcome back to Deck and Walk 2023. We are now turning over into the new Deccan, which is Gemini 3. Um, but before we start talking about the Deccan card itself, which is the Ten of Swords, as you can see here, um, I just want to um, tell you a few things. First of all, this is going to be a short video because I am um, dealing with a cold or sinus infection or something, so you can hear my voice. I'm not feeling so well. Um, but I still wanted to, um, I still wanted to make this for you guys and for myself. Secondly, um, for those of you that are, um, unfamiliar with the deck and walk, I'm going to leave links in the description box below for the introduction to the deck and walk, as well as a playlist of all of the videos that I've made so far, along with a lot of videos created by others in the, in the community, um, that are following the deck and walk. Basically the deck and walk is a, um, uh, those of us that are, um, walking through essentially, um, you know, figuratively walk and kind of literally, <laughs> um, walking through the zodiacal, uh, wheel of the year. So we're going from zodiac sign to zodiac sign as we traverse the year. And we're paying attention to the way that that zodiac sign is split into three pieces, which are called decans that span a 10 day period. Um, and roughly 10 degrees. And each of those decans is related to a tarot card of the minors from two to 10. And it also has correspondences with the major cards. So if you wanna know more specifically, go ahead and, and read through the description box below, find my link to my introduction video and all the resources that I typically use um, to learn more about the Deccans. Alrighty, so um, having said all that, let's go ahead and take a look at the Deccan that we are now shifting into. We are at the very end of Gemini season with the third Deccan of Gemini, and this is the Ten of Swords. <laughs> so probably one of the most um, if not the most iconic minor card, I would say after some of the very um, well-known major cards, this card in the um, Waite Smith Tarot is probably the most iconic, the Ten of Swords. And this is Sun in Gemini. Um, so it tells us right up here, Sun in Gemini, it's mutable air. And all that means is that the zodiac sign of Gemini is a mutable sign. It is comes at the end of the spring season and it's a transitional time between spring and summer. So you start to feel the end of spring and the beginning of summer during this time period. It, Like I said, it is the third decan of Gemini and it spans from um, June 11th through June 20th. This card, I forgot to say, um, comes from this deck, the Divine Deck and Tarot. I always leave links for it down below, um, created by Reese Marin. And this has been like my go-to deck um, for this particular study. Um, the Ten of Swords. <clears throat> also, we have the title, which is, I believe the, it's the Lord of Ruin, um, the Hermetic title. For this particular Deccan, I've kept it pretty simple. I really only want to take a look here at the Rider Waite Smith um, images. I encourage you to go ahead and look at your other decks, the Thoth, everything else that you possibly get your hands on um, to take a look. But for me, I feel like this image is the Ten of Swords. It's the most recognizable. It's the image that always stays with me. And it's the one that I feel like best represents the um, astrology of this particular Deccan. And it was confusing at first, and then suddenly it clicked and made sense to me. So let's talk about the major cards that are um, 
that that are involved here. So we have the sun in Gemini. So the major card is the sun. And the other major um, that is that stands for Gemini is the lovers. So sun in Gemini, it's a little bit confusing because when we look at these cards, we imagine that this like this idea of these two cards together, the sun being in Gemini would be something that is like happy and delightful, you know, like the sun. Um, the sun is a card for our to become illuminated. Um, it is our authentic self. The sun is um, happiness. It is joy. Um, all those things. And then Gemini is a sign that is witty and intelligent and communicative and um, ruled by Mercury. So you would think that these two um, would work well together. Um, in this case, however, when we have the Ten of Swords, which is like so melodramatic, I think that's why I love it so much that the sun, that the Ten of Swords um, is so totally melodramatic. Um, and it got me to thinking when I, because when you look at this, it's like, it's not just dead. It's like overkill dead. It's like, you know, really, really dead. He's, it makes me think of um, the Princess Bride. He's not dead. He's just mostly dead. Um, but like, yeah, this is m over. This is the other side of that. He's more than dead. He's like very, very over dead. Um, and it just like, you know, I have a morbid sense of humor, but what it, when it makes me think of um, this like melodrama of this scene, because it's like really extremely dramatic, right? Um, is that it has to do with the dramatic nature of Gemini, you know? Geminis tend to be a little bit melodramatic. <laughs> so their true selves are a little bit melodramatic, right? So their true selves uh, are a little bit melodramatic. So that's one way that I thought of it kind of funny. Um, the swords are the realm of the mind or the intellect and so obviously what we have clearly depicted is the is a death the death of something the end of something um for my my sources this time i kind of read this one blog and i'll leave a link to it below that really made sense to me and just bits and pieces of it Put, when I put it together, it really stood out to me as um, the way that I could, you know, um, the way that I could combine these ideas um, of Sun and Gemini to equal the Ten of Swords. And um, the blog post is really great. I'll leave the, the link in the description box below so that you can read it as well. It goes through the imagery in this in the particular card um, and talks about the robe, the red, the red blood, the ten swords, the black sky. And for me, one of the most important pieces of the imagery of the ten of swords is the um, the sky, like below the black, where we cannot tell if this is sunrise or sunset. And I, for me in readings, I feel like it depends on the context of the reading and the question. And sometimes I read this as a sunrise and sometimes I read this symbolically as a sunset, you know, um, the end of something or the beginning of something is almost exactly the same thing, you know, where the circle meets and the point the end and the beginning, right? Um, I'm gonna just read a little bit from this blog post um, so that you guys have an idea of where my mind went. This is from joyvernon.com and um, they were actually quoting or kind of paraphrasing from Austin Coppock's book, 36 Faces, which is out of print and I like would 
love to get my hands on a copy of 36 Faces. Um, one of these days, I, I keep hearing rumors that, he, that he's gonna reprint it. But in any case, I would absolutely love to have that book. I think it, um, I think it would have really been illuminating, haha, -ha, um, along this Deccan walk. But one of these days, um, when I become like even more Deccan savvy, <laughs> I will have that book. Um, so, so on this blog, they say Austin Coppock in 36 Faces explains the disparity ingeniously. So, um, the blogger was saying that it's weird to think of, you know, Sun and Gemini ending up with this really dramatic, very final, you know, death death card like it's a you know like really um they also talk a little bit about sorry before i go on i'm interrupting myself i tend to do that um they also talk about the meaning of this card not just being a death but being um stabbed in the back and that's one of the that's one of those interpretations of this card that i think sometimes is like almost too literal but um actually i think is an interesting take and an interesting um, way to interpret if, if it comes through that way in a reading. Anyway, I'll go on um, or I'll re I'll reread. This is from Joy Vernon's blog. Austin Coppock in 36 Faces explains the disparity ingeniously. He suggests that this Deccan leads into the summer solstice. So we're talking about the end of June, right? So the longest day of the year, the summer solstice, it represents the culmination and completion of the sun's annual power. So it's like we're getting that duality, which is what Gemini is known for, the twins, um, for the sun, the duality of the sun, right? It's culmination, it's completion. Um, the 10 days of the last decade of Gemini are the longest days of the year, peaking at the summer solstice on the first degree of the first decade of Cancer. Coppock goes on to relate the height of power and subsequent defeat to the uh, brother battle mythology in which Gemini-like twins alternately overthrow one another. So he goes on and to talk about the mythology of the Ten of Swords, and it is the battle of the Oak King and the Holly King, and it's a really good story. I do not have the voice to read that whole blog post to you, but like I said, I'm gonna leave the link down below so that you can read it for yourself. It's really interesting. I love mythology about Gemini. The Oak King and the Holly King is a really interesting um, myth to tie into Gemini as well. I know that they is the Greek myth. Oh my gosh, I wanna say it's the twins, the, the stars, um, Castor and Pollux. Um, there's a myth there as well um, that's really interesting. But ultimately, where I landed with this particular Deccan and with our um, star of the show, which is this like, I mean, this card is just like so amazing to me because it's so visceral. Like there's such a emotional and visceral and like obvious clear reaction to this to this imagery that I can't like I I just this is the one right so where I ended up with this um and in the spread that I've created for you guys which I will leave um a link to the pdf below and I will also post a picture of the spread that I'm create the deck and spread for Gemini 3 that I've created for you in the boho tarot facebook group which you're welcome to join us um if you haven't already for this more spread is about taking the idea of the duality of the sun. So that idea of duality in Gemini and understanding that what the duality of the sun is. The sun is our life force, but the sun sets and the sun rises. And when you think about ancient peoples who worship the sun and sun, you know, um, had sun gods that were part of their 
you know, um, their religion, their culture, their, I mean, their very, you know, lives. The sun is our life force. And we daily, you know, daily see the sun rise and see the sun set. Um, it is much clearer, I think, and much more obvious of a cycle than, say, the moon, right? The moon is more mysterious. The moon is, you know, the moon is something that's a little bit harder for us to grasp. But the beginning of the day and the end of the day, the sunrise and the sunset, it's a very clear, literal um, cycle and that we, you know, we move through time. Um, you know, that's how we move through our, through time. We, you know, our, our, we tell time by the sun and we, t and that, symbol is important for everything in the way that we walk through our lives and how we understand how things start and how things end. And so um, this is a card of duality because as something ends, something begins, which is what's suggested in you know, in this very melodramatic way, but it's also suggested in this idea that we don't know whether or not this is a sunrise or a sunset. And so I created a very simple spread where we're gonna ask ourselves those symbolic questions about beginnings and endings and sunrise and sunset and about how we process like the death of, the death of something, which for me, because this is the swords, it's really the death of a, a way of thinking. It's the death of a pattern of thought. Um, that's most often how I read the Ten of Swords. But we're gonna ask ourselves, um, in the, like as a sunset question, um, if I let this go, this will awaken. So the sunset position is, if I let this go, and the sunrise position is, this will awaken. Just two cards with your 10 of swords in the middle. Um, very simple, I think, but very potent. Um, okay, that's it for me, you guys. I'm gonna put the Deccan major cards back out here for you to take a look at once again and for you to ponder that idea of beginnings and endings, sunrises and sunsets in your lives. I certainly will. Um, I wanna thank you, all of you that have been along this deck and walk journey with me. Um, I really appreciate all the wonderful feedback and community that we've been building. Love hearing from you, love um, sharing with you. So thank you for sticking around with me and I hope that you all have a beautiful, wonderful Deccan of Gemini 3 and a beautiful, wonderful day. Bye now.